Hi, welcome to Metro by T-Mobile. Hi, my dad is in serious need of an upgrade. Yeah, my phone's a fossil. He needs a new phone and a new network stat. Well, when he switches to Metro, he can get an amazing iPhone 7 with HD Retina display for just $99.99 after ID validation. Wow, $99.99? Bye-bye, fossil. Requires porting of eligible number not currently active on T-Mobile network or active on Metro in past 90 days. With validation of ID, an independent database limit for per account slash household. 32 gigabyte model only. See store for details and terms and conditions. Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 374. The secret of being a good con man is being able to know what the mark wants and how to make him think he's getting it. Ken Casey. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, welcome to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Today's show is sponsored by Rise of the Film Entrepreneur, how to turn your independent film into a profitable business. It's harder today than ever before for independent filmmakers to make money with their films, from predatory film distributors ripping them off to huckster film aggregators who prey upon them. The odds are stacked against the indie filmmaker. The old distribution model of making money with your film is broken and there needs to be a change. The future of independent filmmaking is the entrepreneurial filmmaker or the film entrepreneur. In Rise of the Film Entrepreneur, I break down how to actually make money with your film projects and show you how to turn your indie film into a profitable business. With case studies examining successes and failures, this book shows you the step-by-step method to turn your passion into a profitable career. If you're making a feature film, series, or any other kind of video content, the Film Entrepreneur method will set you up for success. The book is available in paperback, ebook, and of course, audiobook. If you want to order it, just head over to www.filmbizbook.com. That's film, B-I-Z, book.com. Today's show is also sponsored by the Make Your Movie Boot Camp. You want to make a feature film but have no idea where to begin. I feel you because that's exactly where I was when I first got started, but I finally decided to stop talking about making a movie and go out and just do it. After working in the business for over 25 years and working with some of the biggest clients and stars in Hollywood, I decided to finally make my first micro-budget feature film that was self-distributed, sold around the world, and I even got a streaming deal from Hulu. It took me years of hard work to learn from my mistakes and to get where I am today. I want to help filmmakers break through their own fears and show them the secret sauce on how to make a profitable film. The Make Your Movie Bootcamp is a two-day intensive covering on day one micro-budget filmmaking and on day two the film entrepreneur method where you learn how to create revenue from your feature films. We cover everything from flushing out your idea, the screenwriting process, finding money, crowdfunding, directing your film, post-production workflows, marketing, film deliverables, self-distribution secrets, and how not to get ripped off by predatory film distributors. The boot camp takes place March 28th and 29th in Burbank, California, and spaces are limited, so act now. Head over to mymbootcamp.com. That's mymbootcamp.com. So guys, today... I have a interesting episode. I kind of started this new series that I'm going to be doing on the podcast every once in a while, and it's going to be entitled Predatory Film Distributors and the different scams and things that they do to screw over filmmakers. And I'm going to be bringing these little ways out into the into the light, out of the corners and the darkness and the back alleys of film distribution. And before I get started, I wanted to give you a quick update on the tug situation. If you have not listened to episode 373, definitely check that out. And it breaks down everything that we know to date about the closing of tug and how it's affecting hundreds, if not thousands of filmmakers. And I know just from the few filmmakers that I've spoken to that we're easily into the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars that are owed to filmmakers and also to customers that bought tickets through a tug screening. So if you want to get the latest updates on all of that, you can join my Facebook group, which was the Protect Yourself from Distributor Facebook group, but now we're transitioning that into Protect Yourself from Predatory Film Distributors slash Aggregators. And you can get to it by going to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash Protect Yourself. That's where all the latest information on Tug, other filmmakers' experience, 
and what's going on with other predatory film distributors and or aggregators or you know, just shenanigans in general in the distribution world. That's where filmmakers are going to uh, to inform and educate each other. And that little group that I started for basically to help distribute victims has turned into a wonderful uh, community of filmmakers there to help and assist and answer questions about distribution. And uh, that's why it's evolving into this after Tug. I felt that it's time to to evolve that group. So just go to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash protect yourself and sign up. Now, before I get into this a scam that predatory film distributors use, I want to make it really clear that I am not bashing all film distributors. It is I want to make that very crystal clear. There are good film distributors out there. I do believe that there are many more bad distributors. I think it's harder to find a good distributor than it is to find a bad or predatory film distributor without question. So please, anytime I hear me talk about predatory film distributors, there's a reason why I'm saying predatory. It's not all film distributors. I myself am with a film distributor for uh, This Is Meg and for parts of This Is Meg and for On the Corner of Ego and Desire. I've partnered with this uh, distribution company, which is Indie Rights, and uh, I love them. They're they're great, and there are they are a unicorn in the distribution world. And there are other good ones as well. Please do your own homework. Please do your own research and due diligence on any film distributor that you work on. But what I'm talking about in these these episodes that I'm going to be doing over the course of the year, exposing these kind of slimy, ridiculous, you know, immoral techniques that these guys are using to screw over filmmakers, just be aware that you have to be looking out for this with any and all distribution contracts that you might sign. So let's get into it, guys. So today's episode is about the bankrupt reboot scam. Now, I've been in this business a long time, and as you guys know, I've, I've, I'm in this. I'm in deep, especially now getting into the distribution side of the business. I had never heard of this scam before, and it's been going on for years. And the scam is done not only in our industry, but many industries around the world. And this is how it goes, guys. A predatory film distributor will prey on desperate independent filmmakers and will try to obtain the rights to as many low-budget indie films as they can in for no money up front, of course, no MGs, no minimum guarantees, in a short period of time, let's say a year or two, if not faster. During this time, they will package large groups, if not all of their films, into kind of clusters, into packages, into transactions that they can sell them off to. So if they have 50 movies, they'll sell all 50 movies off as a package to foreign agents, um, streaming services, uh, other distribution outlets, wherever, wherever they think they can get some money. And they'll do that a bunch of times. Of course, because you've signed a horrible deal in the first place with these guys, they will take forever, if anything, to pay any money out. And they'll probably won't even pay anything out at all. Now, this is the rub, guys. Rather than actually paying the filmmakers that are owed money, and they've already screwed you over by packaging them out, and I talk a lot about that in my book, this predatory film distributor will then file for bankruptcy protection because they're going to crank up a ton of money, ton of debt, doing what they do. And filing for bankruptcy is fairly easy here in the United States. So then you must be asking yourself, but if the distributor goes bankrupt, what happens to the rights of all those films? Well, I'm glad you asked, guys. These bottom dwellers go to the bankruptcy court hearing and then buy back all the rights to the catalog of films from their own bankrupt company. The court has no other choice because there's nobody else there to buy it. So basically, someone they raise their like, anybody here willing, willing to bid for this? And they go in and they buy it. So since nobody else is there to bid against them, they buy back the rights to your films, pennies on the dollar. But it even gets worse from there. These bastards then form a brand new company and assign all these newly purchased films to themselves through that company. 
Now, because they did this, they are no longer legally obligated to pay any of the filmmakers any of the money that is owed to them. So they own the film that you killed yourself to make and they buy it for pennies on the dollar and they never pay you a thing. This is made possible because of the original contract that you sign as a filmmaker. And the clause is absolving them in the event of a bankruptcy. And to add insult to injury, when the rights they originally sold off expire, they get to resell them again and again and again. These predators run the same grift on filmmakers again and again and again. And each time they form new companies and new companies. This is an extremely profitable business model. Not ethical in the least, but it is legal. Now you as a filmmaker can sue for this and sometimes you'll win, but now you're looking at a lot of court costs to try to get the rights back to your film. And it might make sense if you have a large movie and you feel that you can make money with it, but they're banking that most of the filmmakers are either embarrassed or not able to, uh, to do it. They're not savvy enough to do it. They're afraid to, to take them to court, all these different things. And, and they just bank on filmmakers just rolling over. And nine out of 10 will. There'll be that one, that squeaky wheel that makes a lot of noise. And they might just give that movie back just to shut them up. And that happens all the time. As I did more and more research about this, I, I was shocked at how prevalent it is in the industry. I can't believe I hadn't heard about it. This is one of those dirty secrets because there's predatory film distributors. There's, there's people that will create a contract that is obviously just misleading and completely in favor of the distribution company and worded in a way that you'll never see a dime. There's that predatory guy. But then you've got this completely new level of scumbag that is literally coming after your film in a fraudulent way, knowing what they're going to do is going to screw you when you sign that, that paper. It's, it's unconscionable, and I, I just wanted to bring this up and I wanted to put it out there so filmmakers can be very aware of what the hell's going on. Now, during my research, I found a bunch of these cases of, of companies doing this. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a case study. Now, I'm not going to name names, obviously, but I will give you rounded amount estimates of what they did. So this distribution company had her company declared insolvent, uh, let's say, last year. And all of her company's films, which was about 350 films, were deemed not to have any value to third parties. Because it's not really an asset. It's not, a, it's not a microwave, a computer, office supplies. It's none of that. So they had no value. In other words, this distribution company's library was worthless in the court's eyes. And the company owed about $6.5 million to creditors, including many, many, many filmmakers. And the company assets were basically around $200,000. That's it. So then they create a separate company that then purchase all of their original, all the original company's assets for about $150,000 because nobody else was there to bid. So this predatory distributor bankrupted their company and bought back all of their films for about 200K, saving themselves about $5.8 million. I mean, you've, you've, I mean, it's diabolical. It really is. But it is so immoral and so just horrible to do to people. It's amazing. And this company had done it multiple times. So how do you protect yourself as an independent filmmaker? Well, before I continue, I have to understand I am not an attorney and this is not legal advice. You should definitely reach out to an attorney, an entertainment attorney who understands entertainment law and distribution contracts. But to my understanding, after talking to some attorneys, these are things that you can do to help protect yourself. First off, do some research. Start doing your homework on the company. 
find out the owners of the company, how many times they've been, they filed bankruptcy. How old is this distribution company? Is it a fly-by-night distribution company that just launched? Has you know, All these things you need to understand. Call filmmakers who were with them from their old company. If they had an old company, call those filmmakers. See if, what kind of experience they have with them. Don't ask the company for referrals because you're only going to get sweet people who are probably their best friends. So do your homework, do your research. You got to be careful about these little clauses, these little BS clauses that can literally screw you. So first thing you need to do is include a clause in the contract that states that in the event of a bankruptcy, all rights revert back to the original owners. And make sure that your lawyer checks that language and make sure there is no way they can get out of it. Make sure it's ironclad. And another thing you need to do is to make sure there's an official procedure outlining the steps in the event of a bankruptcy and what needs to be done in order to get your film back. Again, please consult with an attorney about this, but this is just one of many clauses and many little tricks that predatory film distributors use in their contracts to screw you over. I know of a specific, I know this a specific Sundance winning film and filmmaker who signed with a distribution company who went bankrupt and their Sundance winning film was locked up in bankruptcy court for three to four years. and and, And by the time the filmmaker got that movie out, it was old news. It was done. If they would have just put in a clause stating if the company goes bankrupt, all rights revert back. Please check with an attorney on this and make sure that they go over every little clause with a fine tooth comb. And like I said in my book, Rise of the Film Entrepreneur, do not get Uncle Bob, who's a real estate attorney. He's not going to understand the minute language that and clauses that will screw you as an independent filmmaker. You've got to get a seasoned entertainment attorney who knows film distribution contracts and is extremely savvy when doing it. But at the end of the day, guys, it's your responsibility to do as much homework as humanly possible. If you want to learn more tricks of predatory film distributors, I have an entire chapter, or actually two chapters, detailing all the little tricks and scams that they pull on filmmakers in my book, Rise of the Film Entrepreneur, at www.filmbizbook.com and check it out there. Also, thank you so much, guys, for all the amazing reviews, the amazing love that I've gotten for On the Corner of Ego and Desire. I am humbled that you guys love the film so much. I truly, truly, truly appreciate all the love from the tribe. It is now available on uh, Prime on Amazon Prime if you want to watch it on Amazon Prime and on Tubi if you want to watch it for free. If you want to go, I- iTunes is there and of course on Indie Film Hustle TV where you get the six hours plus of special features on how I made a $3,000 film at the Sundance Film Festival. And you can go to egoanddesirefilm.com and you can get links to all of those places there. And if you did see the movie, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to go to Amazon and leave a review. We need to get to 100 reviews before 30 days. If we do, Amazon's algorithm is going to really give this a lot of juice, and that's really, really important. So please, if you see it even on another platform and you have an Amazon account, please just do me a favor and leave a review there. And also, there were a bunch of haters on IMDb that came out before the movie even was released and dropped our rating on IMDb and has been growing so much. Thank you so much for everybody that's gone on and rated it. All you gotta do is go on to IMDb and give us a good review, hopefully eight, nine, 10 stars if you like the film. And that really helps us out a lot as well. It works with the algorithm on Amazon. So that's a little trick, by the way, if anybody's going and and self-releasing or self-distributing their film on Amazon, those are some of the metrics that you need to hit to really get some love from Amazon's algorithm. So I hope this episode was of service to you guys. I hope it's if it just saves one filmmaker the pain and suffering that I've seen so many other filmmakers go because they did not understand that this was a clause, this was a little trick that that these bastards do. I hope it really does help at least one person. And since you have listened to this, please share this. I want this information to get out to as many filmmakers 
as possible. So you don't, if you don't want to share the, the link, just tell them. Just get this information out there. I want this information out to as many people as humanly possible. If you want to get a quick link to this episode, you can share it. It's IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash 374. And there I will have links to the Facebook group, uh, to everything else that we talked about in the episode. And, uh, and, and just please, just get this information out there. I really appreciate it. We're in this together. And I'm just truly tired of filmmakers being taken advantage of by these predatory film distribution companies and predatory sales agents and all the other, you know, just scum, sharks, snakes that are in this side of the business. It is my goal in life to expose all of these little tricks and techniques as much as possible so you guys can be educated and protect yourself from these things because if you make a movie and you spend $500,000, if you spend $5 and it takes you a year to make and it's your baby and all of a sudden one of these guys comes in and steals it from you because you were ignorant to what they could do, then I have failed. So hopefully I want all this information to get out there to help as many filmmakers as possible. Thank you for listening. As always, keep that hustle going. Keep that dream alive. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com. Who are you texting? My therapist. You text with your therapist? Text, video chat, call. Yep, that sounds too easy. How did you find her? I just went to BetterHelp.com slash save. She's a licensed therapist and it's all online. I connect when it's convenient for me and don't waste time driving anywhere. Plus, it's affordable. I wonder if I should try it. It's great to talk to someone in confidence. She's helped me sort out quite a few things. And right now you save 10% off the first month when you go through BetterHelp.com slash save. BetterHelp.com slash save. Got it.